This is the Nokia 8.3, and this has one of the best looking backsides on a smartphone that I've ever seen. I mean, just look at it, how when the light hits it, the color changes slightly. It's really mesmerizing. So if you're like me and you like stock Android and also phones with big displays, then HMD Global might have the phone for you with the 8.3. So let's find out in this video. I'm Kevin from Peacock Inside Tech, and this is my Nokia 8.3 5G review. Last year, I was excited when Google announced the new Pixel 5 because it got a cheaper price tag for a pretty good phone. And at the same time, I was a little bit disappointed because I personally like bigger phones and I really wanted to see an XL version, but it didn't happen. So HMD Global might have the solution for people like me that want a bigger phone, but also want stock Android. Because I do a lot on my phone, like writing emails, watching YouTube videos, and just multitasking. So I like to have a bigger screen so it doesn't feel so cramped. Oh, by the way, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you like Nokia devices so you don't miss any content in the future, and that would be greatly appreciated. Let's start with the design of the Nokia 8.3. I personally really like it. It's just super sleek and minimalistic, and it has this Nordics inspired backside, which they call Polar Night, and it just looks really good. On the right side of the phone, you get a volume rocker and a power button, and the fingerprint scanner is integrated into the power button so you can just unlock the phone quickly and securely. On the bottom, you get a USB-C charging port, a headphone jack, and a speaker, and a microphone. And on the left side, you get the Google Assistant button that I normally like, but on the 8.3, it's across from the power button, so it makes it really easy to accidentally activate the Google Assistant. So luckily you can deactivate it, but you cannot remap it. But the build quality and design of this phone is great. But I have to say this is a really big phone because of this huge display up front. The 8.3 comes with a 6.81 inch screen on the front, and it's huge, it gives you lots of space to play around with, to consume content, to multitask, to watch videos. It's a pretty great size display. It also has a full HD plus resolution, so everything is nice and sharp. It's not an OLED panel, so it doesn't have the inky blacks and really saturated colors, but it is a really good display because of the IPS technology. You have great viewing angles and it gets plenty bright. Unfortunately though, it doesn't come with a 90 hertz refresh rate for a smoother experience like you get on a Pixel 5, but if you're coming from a phone with a 60 hertz display, you won't be missing anything really, only if you've used phones with a 90 or 120 hertz display. But watching YouTube videos and browsing is really nice on this really big screen, so if you're like me and consume a lot of content on your smartphone, you will probably appreciate the bigger size. On the back of the phone, you get a quad camera setup with Zeiss optics, which is really cool. And the overall experience of the camera is pretty good. I did expect it to be a little bit better, but it's a pretty good camera setup. The 64 megapixel main camera can really capture a lot of detail and good lighting. It also produces pretty accurate colors and the dynamic range is pretty good. It has a scene detection mode that tries to optimize the camera settings for the shot that you're trying to take, and it works pretty well. I just noticed that the camera software tends to over sharpen the photos and that can make the photos look a little noisy, especially in low light. Unfortunately, low light performance is not so great. So if that's important to you, you might be a little bit disappointed. There's also a 12 megapixel ultra wide camera and it's pretty wide at 120 degree field of view. Like the main camera, the shots can be a little over sharpened, but the photos come out looking okay. And the ultra wide can also be used in video mode. HMD Global decided to put a big focus on video recording with the 8.3 and it gives you these cool cinematic features so that you can play around and get that cinematic look in your videos. It records at a really wide 21 to 9 format and it also records 4K at 24 FPS. And you can have a lot of fun with it if you're a creative type. It can also record 4K at 30 FPS in the normal video mode, and the quality is pretty good. 
There are also some really cool helpful features like wind noise reduction while recording, and there's an action mode for fast moving objects. It can also record OZO audio for a 3D surround sound effect. So you can pretty much create a whole movie just on your phone. And on the front of the Nokia 8.3, you get a 24 megapixel selfie camera and it can record video up to 2K resolution, which is pretty nice. And this is the kind of quality that you can expect from the front facing camera. And also you can hear the audio quality. Let me know what you think. And last but not least, there is a two megapixel macro camera on the back of the Nokia 8.3. And here are some of the sample photos that I've taken with it. The 8.3 comes with the Android One platform installed, so that means you get up to two big software upgrades and you get up to three years of monthly security patches. And at the time of recording this video, it comes with Android 10 and a security patch for January of 2021. And the overall software experience is really good. I mean, it's pretty much like stock Android, so everything is responsive and smooth. And the 8.3 comes with the Snapdragon 765G, the same that you get in the Pixel 5. So that also makes it 5G capable, although in Germany, 5G isn't as big as it should be yet. The battery performance of the 8.3 is also pretty good. I had no trouble getting through a full day, and sometimes I could even get close to two full days with one charge. So I had a good battery experience with the 8.3. And that's to be expected when you have a 4,500 milliamp battery built into the phone, and it also comes with 18 watts charging out of the box. It's not as fast as something you get from OnePlus like the Warp Charge or from Oppo with the Voop Charge, but it can charge the phone at a fairly decent speed. So in my opinion, the Nokia 8.3 is a pretty great phone. I mean, it would have been nice to see a 90 hertz display on it, but everything else about the phone is pretty great. So if you're looking for a phone with a big display and stock Android, you should definitely consider the Nokia 8.3 5G, and especially right now because it only costs around 400 euros. So like always, thanks for watching my video. A thumbs up if you liked it would be appreciated and I'll see you soon in the next video.